So now we're going to look at methods to compare numbers and we have assert is above and assert is at most are two ways to do this. So the is above method basically checks if an input number is above an expected or like a benchmark value, I guess. So let's say we have this benchmark value two that we want our numbers to be above and we have this input value of one. What it essentially does is it checks if input is greater than benchmark returns true. And if that's the case, the test passes. So if we run this test right now, we know that um, one is not greater than two. So this will return false. And therefore, um, this test fails. And as you can see, it's failed here. And it said expected one to be above two. Now, if I change this to equal um, the input to equal two, and I run this again, it still fails because even though two is equal to two, it's not above two. And remember, this is above uses greater than, not greater than or equal to. So two is not above two, so this fails as well. Finally, if I change the input to something like three, we know that when we run three is greater than two, it will run return true. Therefore, this test is going to pass. So if I run this now, yeah, we can see that it says all tests have passed. So that's how the is above works. Now the other method is is at most. And is at most checks if the input is um, less than or equal to the benchmark value. So now we have three and two here. So if we run this now, we can see that this part will return false because again, we want this to return Sorry, I need to change this one first. Um, sorry, so this, I'll start again. So this is at most checks if the input is less than or equal to this benchmark value. So if we run this with three and two, we know that three is not less than or equal to two. So we know this will return false, therefore this test will fail. And if we run this, we can see that that's exactly what happened. It says expected three to be at most two. Now, if I change this to something like, if I change this input to two, and we do two is less than or equal to two, we know that this will evaluate to true because it's less than or equal to, and two is equal to two. So two is at most two. So that's okay. So if we run this, we can see that the test passes. And if I change the input to one or anything below that, um, again, one or anything below will be less than um, two. So that counts as less than or equal to. So this input here is still at most this benchmark value of two. So let's look at the test now. And um, what we have here is we have, I don't know what this weird numbers thing is, but once again, we have to make these tests pass and we can give them, we have um, a ben like a, an actual input value and a benchmark value here as a second argument. And um, we can either give it to is above or is at most to make it pass. So the first one, we have a benchmark value of five and we have this string hello dot length. So the dot length method will calculate the length of the string. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five characters. So we have five and five here. So if we give this to is above, we know that five is not above five, so this will fail. So if we want this to pass, we need to give it to is at most. And I'll open the bracket there again. So five is less than or equal to five, which is true, so that's okay. Next we have one and zero here. And um, we know that, if, so if we look for is above, we know that one is greater than zero and we know that this would return true. So we can give this to is above here. Then we have math.py and um, remember that pi is equal to uh, 3.14 something. So that's this value right here. We'll evaluate into that and we have three right here. So if we give this to um, is above, it'll check if three is great 3.14 is greater than 3 is true and that's the case so that this this will pass so we can give it to is above if we gave it to is at most it'll check if 3.14 is less than or equal to 3 which will be returned false so this that would have failed finally we have one minus math.random and if we just look at um, math.random and javascript um what math.random does is it returns 
a random number between 0 and 1. So that's the important part. So whatever this number is, it'll be less than 1 and greater than 0. So if we take away a number between 1 and 0 from 1, we know that the value is going to be below 1 because this is this math or random will return a positive number because it's above 0. So we'll take a positive number away from 1. So this result of this will be somewhere between 0 and 1. But the most important part is it'll be less than 1. And so that means that this is less than or equal to this right here. So we want to give it to the um, is at most. And by the way, if this math or random number, it says it includes zero. So if this did turn out to be zero, this would work out to be one. And that's still less than or equal to one because it's equal. So that's okay. So if we run that now and um, I go ahead and submit that, we can see that, yeah, all the tests have passed there. So that's okay.